All right, everybody, uh, welcome. Um, this is my 1933 Dodge DP6. It's got a straight six flat head in it. Um, ah, dual side mounts. Um, car is extremely clean. This is a barn find. Found this car in uh, Northern California, Lincoln, California. It's uh, 45 minutes above Sacramento where I grew up. This car has been in the garage since 1991. Um, this car, of course, you can see uh, if you go to Sacktown OG on Instagram, you can see the full build of this car and you can see uh, everything I've done to it. Now, this is all the original paint. I've just buffed it and waxed it to the point of where you can see uh, reflections now. You can see all the before and after pictures um, if you were to go to uh, my Instagram page. S-A-C-T-O-W-N-O-G at gmail.com. Now, what I'm showing you today is actually the brakes. How to get to this. Now, these brakes, which uh, I'm very fortunate, are fine. There's no problems. There is some brake dust, so it has been driven a little bit. Um, there's some wear on them, but they are not bad enough to where I have to replace them. There's about a quarter inch of... Uh, of brake pad on here now the reason I bring that up is because on this 1933 if you could see they are actually riveted on to the brake pads you don't replace this metal part you keep that send them out have somebody rivet new padding onto them um, in order for me to as I'm doing these brakes there I've never done these brakes and I don't know when anyone else did so buying this car uh, I tend to go through every single step of this car. I've replaced the master cylinder. I've replaced the fuel pump. I've replaced fuel pump lines. Uh, I've also replaced the uh, carburetor gaskets. I'm, I'm gonna be rebuilding this carburetor. You could follow on uh, here soon. So, um, you know, clean fuel filter regulator, whatever you choose to call it. Everyone's got a new fucking name for it. Um, there's the new fuel line, fuel pump. There's the straight six. Now, why I'm doing this. So, back here, to get this off, you're looking at this to start out with. This is the beginning. Now, what I wanna make clear to you is that when you take off this hub, you have to remove this cotter pin, you have to remove this nut, you have to remove the washer. That's it. You're gonna take off these, um, these uh, nuts, which actually, notice this. If it was to go righty tidy, lefty loosey, check this out. Left is actually on, and right is actually off. So something to think about, because when I was trying to take off the tires, all I was doing is tightening the, uh, uh, yeah, I was tightening these fuckers. So anyway, something for you to, uh, something you to realize while you're, you're working on your car. Now, take that off, and you're gonna take a tool that I have, which is next to my beer here, this tool. This tool comes with that handle. Um, you can find this on the internet. I'm not sure what part number is, but it's a hub puller. That's all it is. Comes with three legs. You could buy more of these uh, on the internet if you, uh, uh, if you want. I'm sure I think they come off, but I don't wanna take them off right now, I'm using it. Anyways, uh, what you do is you put those on the lug nuts, you put this center pin in the center here and you spin it until it comes off. So I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. I already got this side off. I didn't even need this tool. Uh, so in regards to this right now, I'm gonna try the driver's side front brakes and see if I need it. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, so I've removed the cotter pin. Pretty simple deal. There's a, a hole in there. I'm removing the nut. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need this tool for the fronts. This off. I like to keep things in the in the little bell housing because um, otherwise it tends to get fucking lost. Let's pull out. Come on. I know. Come on. Not, eh? Eh? Come on. There you go. All right. So got that off. Let's hope. Let's hope. Come on, baby. Come on. Ooh, look at that. Ugh. All right, there's the drum. Got good meat on the drum. You don't, you wanna make sure the inside's not beveled in, usually in the center if these pads are bad. 
it'll bevel in the center. Sometimes you can get them returned. This has got a lot of meat on it from the inside to outside. It looks perfect. I might just clean it up with some degreaser and uh, leave that at it. Brake cleaner, I mean. Um, let's see here. These brake pads look nice. They look goddamn near perfect. So everything on here looks pretty fucking good. So the reason why I'm checking these again is because it's a brand new vehicle to me. Not that it's brand new because it's 1933. I ordered new brake hoses mainly because of rubber and you know, your braking depends on the shit. So in order for you to make sure that you're going to stop if you got family with you, friends, or if you care about your own fucking life, you want to make sure you replace this stuff. Um, you could go steel braided if you really wanted to, but let's be real. These are drum brakes. Drum brakes on this old car, you're definitely not stopping fast. You need to account for that. You need to make sure that you know that you got enough braking distance because drum brakes, yeah, they kind of suck. So, um, all right, now that we're back at it, I'm going to go ahead and go to the back uh, over here and set up the back and I'll show you because I'm sure as shit I'm going to need to have the puller to get this off. Um, I got to take off the nut, got to take off the uh, washer, I'm going to take off this cotter pin, I'm going to get the tool mounted and then I'll be back. So give me a moment. All right, so continuing now, I have removed the uh, cotter pin, the nut, and the washer from the hub assembly and the axle assembly. I've taken my tool, which has the handle. Uh, nice, it has this little dick on the end to stop it from going too far forward. Um, now, what you do is, because this will spin on you, um, so you want to hold it while, it while you're hitting it, and you want to smack that with a mallet. Now, I'm not going to have this video while I smack the mallet. Well, I'll try. I'm, no, I'm not. Fuck that. I got shit to do. So, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to smack that with a mallet. It goes that way. Okay? Same as when you, when you use this thing, you can unloosen it and you can tighten it up. And as you can see, I'm spinning it. It's spinning the axle. So, knowing that, you got to hold this. You got to hit that with your mallet. Use a rubber mallet if you want. Be careful of your fenders, which apparently got wax still on them. I gotta go through and do this again. But it's not perfect paint. Nothing's perfect on this car. It's just old. So, all right, I'm gonna continue on. I'll be right back and show you what comes out of it. All right, I'm gonna explain to you right now that I'm out of breath from smacking this motherfucker because yes, it took a good minute, slowly but surely just pounding on this thing. Pounding, pounding, pounding. Okay, it's just like a woman. You gotta pound on it till it comes off. Gotta get it off. So, now, you can see, this is the internals. Pretty good brake pad shoe still. Not, uh, not worn out very much. And uh, this, is, this is how you get to the brakes. Now, once I get the, uh, the brakes, I got the master cylinder, once I get the brake line so I can replace the new brake line back here and then the uh, the ones up front. I will continue and uh, show you the next part of this, how you bleed the brakes, I guess I'll show you that. But um, if you don't know how to bleed brakes, you really shouldn't be working on fucking cars. So, thanks for watching. This is, uh, this is the tutorial about how to take off the hubs on the brakes. Now that they look good, I'm gonna clean them up and put them back on. So, hey, hiccups, drink too much beer. You guys, thanks for watching. Uh, follow the next page and all that good stuff. Peace.